The 80s and freestyle music went together like peanut butter and jelly. The genre emerged in the New York metropolitan area and Philadelphia, primarily among Hispanic and Italian Americans. Many artists achieved a lot of success climbing up the dance charts, such as Sweet Sensation, The Cover Girls, and Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam. The group consisted of vocalist Lisa Lisa, born Lisa Velez, guitarist and bassist Alex Spenador Mosley, and drummer and keyboardist Mike Hughes. Initially assembled and produced by R&B singing group and production team Full Force, Lisa found herself auditioning for them at the age of 14. She was born the youngest of 10 children raised by a single mother in the diverse Hell's Kitchen neighborhood in New York City. Lisa's mother, having sang in a local band in her native Puerto Rico, as well as directed her church choir when she came to the U.S., would be the one to introduce Lisa to music and singing. After seeing the tears in her mother's eyes after performing her first solo in church at six years old, Lisa knew she had a talent that would take her places. Meanwhile, over in Brooklyn, Mike, as a young child, was also being introduced to the wonderful world of music by his mother through the likes of Smokey Robinson and James Brown. By the time he'd entered his teens, he'd secured the role of drummer in a band consisting of brothers Paul Anthony George, Brian B. Fine George, Lucien Bowlegged Lou George Jr., who would later become the heart of Full Force. Even though he was already a member of a group, Mike still aspired to create one of his own. And he would when he hooked up with a local guitar prodigy named Alex Spanador Mosley. Alex grew up influenced by a lot of funk and 70s R&B. By day, Lisa would be in school studying the performing arts, but by night, she would become a regular in a particular downtown dance club called the Fun House. Why that specific club? Well, she'd heard that Madonna had been discovered there and figured, hey, maybe the same thing could happen to her. And it did. Bowlegged Lou sent Mike on a talent search for a young female singer, and he headed straight to that very club where he would meet Lisa. After auditioning for Full Force and blowing everyone away, Mike, Alex, and Lisa, now an official trio, got into the studio just one week later to begin recording their first song. And that was it. They recorded one song and then went back to living their regular everyday lives. Three months later though, they received word that they'd landed a record deal. Their song, I Wonder If I Take You Home, became a smash hit upon its release in 1984. It's somewhat of a miracle that it made it onto the airwaves at all. Fished out of a discard bin at a record company, it was placed on a breakdancing compilation album that club DJs in Europe began to play after it was released there. Pretty soon, American DJs began playing the song as well. After it received some heavy radio play, I Wonder If I Take You Home climbed all the way to number one on the Billboard Hot Dance Club play chart. It also reached number six on the R&B chart and number 34 on the Hot 100, eventually going gold. Their old life, as the group knew it, was over and things started moving very quickly. Lisa had to abruptly quit school and her retail job to be able to keep up with the fever pace that included only being given two weeks to complete an album. The following year, Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam did release their self-titled debut album with Full Force. While dominating the music charts, Lisa started to become quite the fashion icon on. At every concert, she would notice many other teenage girls wearing similar outfits and sporting her signature hairstyle, which was actually an accident after she went too far one day cutting her hair herself. The group followed with another club hit, Can You Feel the Beat, which went to number six on the dance chart. Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam's third and final single on the album, a ballad called All Cried Out, with help from Paul Anthony and Bowlegged Lou from Full Force, also went gold going to number three on the R&B chart and number eight on the Hot 100 in 1986. No doubt playing a major role in the album going platinum. If the group thought that things couldn't get any better, they would have been dead wrong. Their second album, Spanish Fly, released in 1987, took them to even higher heights, even though it was a slight departure from their signature freestyle sound. The shift worked as this album would be the one to give the group their first number one pop hit, followed by their second, with Head to Toe and Lost in Emotion. That album also went platinum. Their third single though, Someone to Love Me For Me, in a way spelled the beginning of the end. It was at the video shoot for the song that it became clear to Mike and Alex that they were being phased out. In the group's unsung episode, Bowlegged Lou admitted that from the beginning, 
the record company only wanted to have Lisa in the forefront. Over time, the trio would only become more and more divided. Their third album, Straight to the Sky, was released two years later. Several moderately successful singles were released, but the album itself didn't put up numbers anywhere near what their previous two had done. Behind the music, things were also on shaky ground. Lisa, who would become a wife after getting married the year before at the tender age of 19, was facing a divorce. According to her, things fell apart due to her husband being a typical macho Latino man who couldn't handle her being the one to bring home the bacon instead of him. At the same time, Lisa was also dealing with a major health scare after finding a bruise under her left breast that was later diagnosed as breast cancer. Without telling anyone, she underwent chemo and radiation while continuing to perform and fulfill her professional obligations. Things between the group and their mentors full force also began to deteriorate. Throughout Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam's entire career, the members constantly had to deal with the confusion over where Full Force ended and Lisa Lisa began. Not surprisingly, support from their record label Columbia also dwindled. For their fourth and what would end up being their final album, 1991 Straight Outta Hell's Kitchen, the label brought in CNC Music Factory's David Cole and Robert Clavillis to produce half of the album while Full Force did the other half. That decision didn't sit well with Full Force at all. Lisa and Robert's relationship also went beyond professional borders and got very personal. The project did manage to generate one hit, Let the Beat Hit Him, which went to number one on both the R&B and dance charts. But by that time, the music scene had changed and the group's signature 80s sound didn't fly in the early 90s. Their label had also just signed a young up-and-coming pop singer that they had every intention of making their new priority. Lisa Lisa and Cult Jam parted ways with their label, and Lisa parted ways with Mike, Alex, and Full Force. She explained in their unsung episode that she felt stifled and believed that the time had come for her to go out on her own. Mike and Alex kept Cult Jam going for a short time before transitioning into other work, Mike becoming a club DJ and Alex offering his services as a musician for hire, working with the likes of Bobby Brown and Jodeci. Lisa released her first solo album called LL77 in 1994. It included the moderate club hit When I Fell in Love and equally moderate R&B single Skip to My Lou. She resurfaced again, but this time on the acting scene in 2001 on the Nickelodeon teen series Taina, playing the title character's mother. A few years later, Lisa married for the second time and went on to have two children. Another album followed for her in 2009 titled Life and Love. After more than two decades apart, Lisa, Mike, and Alex came together for a reunion concert in 2012. In the summer of 2019, Lisa signed with Snoop Dogg's music entertainment company, Uncle Snoop's Army. As the mission statement details on the website, their objective is to give artists the opportunity to get on a stage without the politics of a major agency standing in their way. Since then, the first Puerto Rican slash Latino artist to cross over to the pop and R&B charts can be seen along with her band and dance ensemble performing all over the globe.